Personally, it's made me really value their voice and value their story and reminded me that after, behind every action, there's always something else going on. When you separate groups, especially groups that look different on the outside, people start making assumptions about those groups. And that's not fair because the students don't deserve that kind of Yeah, y'all work hard, and y'all very smart. And y'all don't deserve the way people look upon y'all because they compare you to the number one school in the nation. And y'all don't deserve that. Y'all deserve to get recognized for what y'all do and how great y'all are. I got a little emotional about talking about the separation of LBJ and Lhasa because I, um, I came into as a teacher at LBJ intentionally. I wanted to teach our kids. I do think um, teachers play a big role in changing the school because, you know, they listen to the teachers first, you know. But also, you know, when a teacher gets touchy, you know that it also affects them in a big way. So I think, you know, when Miss Smith had that, um, when she started, you know, tearing up and stuff, it just made you look on how it, it affects teachers, you know, the separation and stuff, how it also affects teachers, not only students. Our, our class or our leadership class was working on negative biases and discrimination on LBJ campus. Uh, one of the things that uh, stayed in my mind concerning uh, today's conversation is the disconnect between students and staff, student teachers and administrators. Uh, there is a, bis a big disconnect and somehow um, I feel we need to sit down at the table, both youth and adults, and bridge that gap. But one of the things the circle does bring out, it brings out confidentiality, where people are feel the need that everybody's sharing and everything will be stayed within there. But the other thing that it does with the students, it sees, it lets the students see the adults, um, see how sincere they are about, and see see how sincere they are about the students and their concerns, and also for us as teachers to see how um, concerned students are about the things that are going on at their school. What I got restorative circles was that um, it's a group where you can go and talk and then be open and then it's all confidential and then you can express yourself in any, in any way you want to. I think other people in other schools should get a chance to experience it to, to show them that their teachers care and that they want they want the school to be successful for the students and for the teachers. This actually changes the dynamics of the school by giving students opportunities to speak. It's all about dialogue and not debate. You know what I mean? That's real critical in the, in the circle. And, that, and that's what I enjoy about it is that it's all about dialogue and not debate. You're not debating about what someone else feels, but you're dialoguing about your feelings. Today's circle was the beginning steps of preparing the students to be leaders of the conversation, to be leaders of change that they feel is necessary for them to be successful on the campus. So we started off the JAG SAIL group, students, JAG Students Advancing in Leadership, with the vision in mind of how do we develop student voice? How do we get from the students what their, their concerns are? What are their wants? What are their needs? How can we better service them as leaders in our schools? What I did with me and my partners, um, we came up with something, with a discussion that the circle can discuss and we could run it. And so I got some index cards and asked people to write a pro and a con because I wanted them to feel comfortable with what we're talking about. And with doing that, what I got was um, more help on my leadership building, um, which was to know how to make people feel comfortable, to know how to reach out to people in order for them to tell me what I need. I believe that other schools should encourage this in their campuses. Um, why? Because it's a very helpful, it's a very helpful program and a very helpful um, to build up your confidence and to build up your leadership confidence and to feel better about yourself and how your life is going to be later on. I think restorative practices are the key ingredient to changing our current system of discipline in our schools. Um, I often struggle with 
district leadership, campus leadership with that punitive mindset, I see restorative practices as a vehicle to truly look at growth mindset. We do a lot of conversation around growth mindset in our schools, but then we continue to uh, perpetuate the the stagnant mindset. And I can't think of the term right now they use other than growth mindset, fixed. So we continue to use the fixed mindset instead of the growth mindset in the way that we go about our processes and our uh, policies and our practices in our school systems. But we're constantly preaching growth mindset, growth mindset. And so I see systemically that um, restorative practices have the potential to provide our schools with a voice around we know, we see, we think that something needs to change. Restorative practices gives you that vehicle to begin to make that change and to develop student voice in making those changes. Um, one of the words, we, the word that I used and I heard another person use was insight. And it is insightful for me. I, I got an opportunity here through the students things that we can do better as a campus to enhance their experience here at school. Um, it's easy for us to talk about what doesn't go, what, what's not right or what's going wrong or even things that are going well, but to hear from their voice and in ways that we can better incorporate the kids into it. And I thought that was hugely impactful. The fact that they led the circle, um, the fact that they kind of dictated the dialogue, how we were gonna talk, the talking piece, all of those aspects of it. And then you, taking that information to see how we can inform change at our campus. The, the great part about this process has been, um, you know, that you didn't, we didn't see it, I didn't see it on the very first meeting, but this unlayering, this unpacking of all these things that we have to carry with us. Um, I think Mr. Fletcher had mentioned it on the very first meeting about us having to project ourselves a certain way on campus and we do have to do that but it's been nice for the kids to see that vulnerable side of us that side that is emotional that side that does love that does care that cries and so in that space it's safe it's safe for everyone to be open to express themselves the way that they feel is going to be um, good for the group and it did not feel uncomfortable and it didn't seem awkward and the kids were not impacted in a way that was negative in fact it was um, um, as you said, their body language was more apt to lean in and listen more intently to hear what that person had to say. And so, um, I mean, that's just been, that's huge, because when do we get an opportunity in our environment, in our world, to sit down as adults and as kids and have those conversations without all those barriers and things that impact our world in the hallway? I think it's a really good process because I see them bringing up stuff that they're concerned with and they're getting a voice of the school. And I think once they get a voice, they're able to actually feel like they belong more. To see personally that my algebra teacher feels that way and that she was emotionally intact with what she feels that has need to be done with us in our future, it made me feel good. It feels like that I'm doing something right. What we do in our restorative circles, I think they should do that every, at every school because you never know what anybody's going through. We have to provide the opportunities for the kids to have a voice. And so, do I think it's beneficial for other campuses? Absolutely. I think everybody should sit down and have that opportunity for kids and adults to sit down and come together in a safe place and have honest dialogue about things that impact everybody to improve change for the entire campus.